Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Corsair K60 RGB Low Profile Gaming Keyboard. It's worth noting before we get started that there are several variants of this keyboard, one of which starts at $80, but this is the most expensive of the lineup, which comes in at around $109 or £129 sterling. This because this sports the Cherry MX speed switches, whereas the other variants uses Cherry's Viola switches for a more affordable setup. But this is an interesting gaming keyboard and this is an unboxing video where I'll be talking to you about what this keyboard's like to use and the highlights of it, which include, as you saw at the beginning, some very nice perky RGB lighting, which can be adjusted within the IQ software. And I'll show you that a bit later on. It also has a low profile design to it and that is the selling point of it obviously it's a low profile keyboard with low profile switches and keycaps meaning it sits low on the desk and is comfortable to use and it's one of the most comfortable low profile keyboards i've tried certainly not the most comfortable that going to the logitech g915 tkl but that thing very small and very expensive by comparison this is a much more affordable gaming keyboard from corsair which has a number of nice design features to it that include a brushed aluminium backplate, perky RGB illumination, and a very nice setup with thanks to those Cherry MX speed switches. Those have a 45 gram actuation force, just one millimeter of actuation distance, and they're guaranteed up to 50 million keystrokes. Now, when I first got it out of the box, as you'll see me doing now, I wasn't that impressed. It doesn't look that great, it's worth bearing in mind, obviously, I've checked out the K100 recently, which is far more premium, much more expensive keyboard. That's at the top of the list of flagship keyboards that are available now. And the K60 is obviously a lot lower down. It's more of a budget friendly keyboard. It's not the cheapest keyboard around either by any means, but that doesn't mean it should be dismissed. It still has the number of nice features to it. As I said, it has that brushed aluminium backplate. You also have easy access media keys buried within the function keys. Nice overall look and feel to it with a flip up design. And again, it's worth noting that this is the UK layout. There's also a US layout. So if you notice a small shift key and a large enter key, that's because this is the UK variant. And here you can see the speed switches, which I'll be showing off a bit later on as well. I'm also going to do a separate video so you can hear the key actuation sounds when it's like to type on. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But essentially, it's not too obnoxious and not terribly loud, but not super silent either. So it's resulted in a pretty nice gaming experience. I've actually been using it when I've been streaming recently and I found that my mic hasn't really picked up the sounds of the keys, which I think is a good indication that it isn't aggressive in terms of the noise that it gives off. It is also worth noting that I did have some problems with this keyboard initially to the point that Corsair had to send me out another one and I'm not really sure what was causing them but I had some very intermittent problems where I couldn't use the Windows key and the media control playback buttons weren't functioning properly. It was intermittent though and the new model they've sent me isn't a problem at all. One other thing that I've had is an issue with the RGB lighting where it got stuck on red and wouldn't change colors. Then I changed USB ports and it suddenly worked again. And then I turned my PC off and on again and it'll be back to red. It was very strange. I actually worked out what the problem was there. It was down to MSI's Mystic Light software. I have an MSI motherboard and that software was sort of colliding with Corsair's IQ and basically overriding the color formats and RGB lighting on the keyboard, which I wasn't really realizing it was doing. It was a very odd situation, but there's a way to disable that if you go into IQ and turn off the SDK. Obviously, you can play around within Mystic Light as well. But what you can see is the RGB lighting on this is very nice. It actually has some of the best RGB lighting I've seen of late. And even without like putting keycap design that I saw on the HyperX Alloy Elite 2, which is probably some of my favorite RGB lighting of recent keyboards I've tried out, alongside SteelSeries Apex Pro, this Corsair K60 also has a very nice effect thanks to the watercolor and such that you've seen at the beginning of this video and type lighting visuals as well. It really lets off some nice lighting. ABS plastic keycaps, so they're not PVT double shot or anything like that, 
but it does have a standard bottom row on it now, which means you can swap it out for your custom key sets if you want to customize the look and feel of it a bit more. Another thing I really liked is that space bar is nicely stabilized. You can see there's no wiggle on it, no matter where you press it, it doesn't wiggle up and down on either side. So it's comfortable to use and really good for gaming and other things. You'll see there's no extra buttons, there's no macro keys, there's no dedicated media keys, which is a shame. You can see them buried up in the F9 to F12 buttons. You have to press a function key in order to access them. There's also a Windows lock key on F1, and you can adjust the RGB brightness with F3 and F4. Also, there's meant to be a setting which allows you to press the function key and then number keys in order to change the RGB lighting, but I couldn't get that to work properly. I found I was adjusting the lighting within Corsair's IQ software, but that's pretty straightforward and easy to do anyway, and I'll show you that a bit later on. Also, you'll note that the ABS plastic does pick up a bit of finger grease. You can see some of it on the spacebar here, and that was literally just out of the box as well. So fairly quickly, it does pick up some dirt, but they are easy enough to clean. Another thing I did note that you might see in some of the later footage is that the back plate seems to pick up a lot of dust and hair as well quite quickly and easily but again it's easy to clean i've sprayed it with some compressed air and it cleans up really nicely it's a very nice easy to use keyboard i've been using it for gaming and working day in and day out for the last couple of weeks and apart from those small niggles with the rgb lighting and the function key problems that i had it's been very solid i've not had any issues with the newer model they've sent me and once i worked out that msi mystic light sync problem it's been absolutely fine. So for the price point, it's a very nice keyboard. It doesn't sit as low as the G915 TKL, but it does sit quite lower than desk, meaning you don't need a wrist rest as such. And it sits low enough that it's comfortable to use throughout the day. I also really like the finish on it. That brushed aluminium backplate looks the part as well. It's got quite a bit of weight to it, a good bit of heft, so it feels like you're getting what you pay for. And obviously it's backed up by these Cherry MX speed switches. Low profile switch design means that they actuate nice and quickly, but also they don't sit really high off the desk. So you don't end up with your fingers well up in the air. And that results in a much more comfortable feel for your wrists and your hands if you're using it all the time. Actuates nicely as well. With the keycaps off, just check out that other video that I'll link to in the description so you can hear the actuation sounds. But with those keycaps off, you'll see the switches themselves don't make much noise at all. Fairly quiet, certainly not silent, but not as loud as blues or browns and easy on the fingers too. The fast actuation and the customization options mean this is a great keyboard. You can get up to a thousand hertz polling rate on it as full key rollover, 100% anti-ghosting as you'd expect. And you can program it up with all sorts of RGB goodness in the software. Now the keycaps, as I said, not PBT double shot, but they do let through a good amount of RGB lighting, a surprising amount actually, and it's very nice in that way. How they'll stand up over time remains to be seen, but the fact that it has a standard bottom row to it now, which they're doing with a lot of the newer Corsair keyboards, means that you can just purchase your own keycap setup and install them on here without a problem. I just recently did something similar with the Corsair K100 where I bought HyperX's pudding keycaps and installed them on that and that looked absolutely amazing. I reckon if you put a custom key set on this or even a pudding keycap set, you'd make even more of that RGB lighting and you could really make this stand out. But as you can see from the few shots that I've got with the RGB lighting turned on, it looks really nice. I was really surprised by how nice it looked. Really liked the watercolor feature of it, a sort of side to side design on the desk too. You can see it glowing nicely here next to my Go XLR with the case in the background, the light on that as well. And obviously, because it's a Corsair product, if you have Corsair fans, Corsair RAM, you can sync it all up within IQ as well. And the result is a very nice setup on your desk. And here we are in Corsair's IQ software. As you can see, the K60 RGB Pro low profile is here and easy to access. We can quickly just jump into that. And then you get to see the layout of the keyboard and what it looks like as standard. On this left side, you then have access to a number of different menu actions and things that you can do. So an action, if you click on this plus button, allows you to then do all sorts of things. Down the bottom, you'll see here you can set up to record macros, 
launch applications, set timers, set up enhanced keys, mouse buttons, keystrokes, all sorts of things. You can remap any key on the keyboard to do other things that you don't want it. If you want it to do something different, you can disable it. So let's say, let's just disable the caps lock key. Now that doesn't work means I can't use caps lock, which is actually very handy because I don't like shouting. So that's worth doing. The other thing you can do is you can easily record macros and you'll see there's a thing down here allows you to just click on that and then record a macro. It's worth noting that you can do it without delays as well. So we can set it so it's not recording delays. So if we just click to record a macro and I'll show you what I mean. Hello, this is the provoked prawn. And I have accidentally left a caps lock on and made a few mistakes. And this type in. So. And then if we just click to stop, you can even go back through and delete out your errors. So you can see they're all listed individually. And then you just have the option to delete all events or delete a selected event. So if we say, where is my errors? Okay, it shows you as well, you see that you have the wrong one in there. So for example, we have release the shift key. We haven't got it pressed right now. So the beginning of this should now say hello. There you go. So you can go through and you can get rid of mistakes that you've made in there. Now, you're probably not going to type out a sentence like that, but you might have actions specific to gaming sessions. You could have something that you write regularly. So, for example, I regularly thank people for leaving comments on my videos and asking them to subscribe. I could type that out and you can just assign it to any button on the keyboard. I've used caps lock, but you might choose something else. Really easy to set up those things and very simple to do. Obviously, there are no extra buttons on it, so you'd have to map it to specific ones but it's fairly straightforward the thing where the keyboard shines is the lighting effect there are a number of different lighting effects to choose from that are predefined and it's per key illumination but you can see there's a long list of different ones in here you have the spiral rainbow rainbow wave color shift which basically goes through but my favorite is this watercolor effect which you saw at the beginning of the intro of this video which is essentially just a load of different colors washing across the keyboard Somehow it looks a lot nicer than the rainbow ones and I just find it really satisfying. You'll note there are options to both slow it down and speed it up so you can adjust that. You can also change it so it only goes between two different colours and you can also set a background colour to it and you can do that with all of these. Type lighting is also a very nice one too. You saw in some of the clips earlier on that I have it set so if you just press the key it just lights up in that cut in a color and then fades away but you can also set it up to ripple lighting where when you press a key it basically lights up the whole keyboard and again you can adjust the speed of that so you can make it happen really slowly or it can go really quick and you can adjust that with any of those you also have lighting link which basically links it up with other corsair peripherals i only have ram at the moment but you could set it up with a mouse a headset or fans and anything else so if you have loads of corsair products it's definitely worth doing those another side note is instant lighting is great for that i like to click on the blue button and basically have everything in my setup as blue it's a very nice effect for that but another thing that you can do is you can set static colors so we can set it up so we've got our base layer of white as an example and then on top of that if you choose to add another one here and then go into static color there you can then add specific colors so we see we've got this as white if we click on these ones we can now set those to red so you see i have a base layer of white with wasd set to red and then for effect we could also add a type lighting effect on top of that so you have this base layer set up as standard. That's what it will look like, but normal. But when we start typing over the top, it then does the effect of the top of that. You could even set it to just the light up specific keys. And you can see the visual effects that you'd get from that as well. And obviously you can customize this. You could keep layering them as well. So you could change numpad, for example, or function keys, set up specific buttons to be certain colors. So they stand out a lot when you're gaming. Hardware lighting is what's used when IQ is not running. So if you've not loaded IQ or your PC is not default to this color, you can obviously choose from effects as well. It doesn't have to be a static color, but you might want to turn it off. You might want to set it 
so that there is no color going on it just goes black the whole thing is just black there's no rgb lighting going on there and that's one way of stopping your pc from having a bit of a light show when you're not at it which is a nice thing to do i've got to set it to watercolor because i really like it performance mode is a simple effects that basically allow you to disable alt tab alt f4 and your windows key you also have a button as the function f1 key also is windows key disabled so if you have hold the function key and, and f1 that disables the windows key so that no longer works and you can't accidentally open the start menu which is very handy as you can see fairly no frills but you can also program quite a lot of different things in there whether it's adding macro actions to specific keys setting up to disable your caps lock key and also changing lighting effects in a variety of different ways a very nice keyboard certainly more affordable than the k100 but not to be sniffed at if you're looking for a low profile comfortable gaming keyboard with some nice specs and a good design to it then this might well be it thanks for taking the time to watch this video i hope you found it useful let me know in the comments if you've got any questions be sure to check out my video on the k100 and the link to the keyboard actuation sounds in the description if you want to hear what the key presses sound like thanks for watching this has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting, and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you, and have a great life.